Mr. Dagger, why can't we have short meetings like this every week? It's not over yet. It's not over yet. <laughs> I still have the gavel. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Go ahead, please. Good. Okay. Hello, Anne. Thank you for having us here tonight. I'm Claire Lovell of One Tuxel Square around the corner, and I'm the secretary for Auburn Community Cats TNR, comma, Inc. Uh, the last time we visited City Hall, uh, we spoke in April of 2022, and I showed these slides. We asked the city for $5,000 toward our new group and its work to reduce the overpopulation of community cats in the city of Auburn through TNR, which stands for Trap, Neuter, and Return. Uh, we are very grateful for the financial assistance that the city gave us, and so we're here today to report back uh, to you, our stakeholders, on our achievements and your return on investment. Since we were last here, we have officially become incorporated with the state of New York, and we have been designated a 501c3, all retroactive to February of 2022. While establishing our own bylaws, we chose the fiscal year of January through December, but for the purposes of your fiscal year, which is July through June, I've broken it up by six month increments in the annual report in front of you. Uh, first, a refresher. We use the term community cats rather than stray or feral because many of them simply aren't feral. Auburn especially has a significant population of abandoned cats, abandoned pet cats, and cats who have relied on human kindness for their entire lives. They just don't live inside a house and they don't belong to a particular person. Uh, we trap them, we get them fixed, and then we bring them back where they were. Uh, our, our handling of them will probably be the only uh, medical care that they ever get. So they also get a rabies vaccine, a distemper shot, and some cursory health care, uh, like flea medicine or wound treatment if it's needed. And then they are returned. We only do trap, neuter, and release work. We do not have the capacity for rescuing or rehoming, no matter how cute, little, or friendly they are. Some of us as individuals, um, might have leads or personal connections on other people who do fostering or have space in their shelter, but it's not our group's prerogative. It's not what we do. Uh, the rescues and shelters in this area are perennially full. It is a major problem, uh, but we don't have a solution for that. Our solution is to help halt the exponential growth of community cats, um, which will alleviate the pressure on rescues in the coming years. There are so many friendly cats in Auburn without real owners that sometimes we can just put a trap on the sidewalk and cats will walk into it, as is the case on Barber Street on the left. Otherwise, we exclusively work on properties where the resident or owner has invited us in and agrees to work with us, as is the case behind this business on Grant Ave. We work on trapping Oops, sorry, I think I skipped. No, sorry. <laughs> we work on trapping locations in the order in which someone asks for help. Um, unless there's a real emergency, which happens infrequently, like a pregnant cat is already trapped inside a shed or something. Uh, people contact us by email. They can Google the name of our group and they will see my out of state cell phone number. So they will text me and they will call me. Um, the most popular way to get in touch with us is through our Facebook page or they just talk to anyone who they know is associated with the group. Uh, since June, our board has expanded, so you'll see a lot of familiar names and a lot of familiar faces here. People will tell any number of these people and they will get back to us. The president of our group, Sue Secor, and I both maintain a master list. She uses paper, I use a spreadsheet, and then we cross-reference once every few months to make sure that we're staying on track and we haven't missed anyone. Oh, where's my mouse? <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay, so if any of you hear of a problem location that could benefit from TNR, where the cats will go back, then please reach out to any of us, anyone you know associated with the group, and we will get to it as soon as we can. As you may have noticed in the last slides, we try to be careful about sharing specific locations because we don't <coughs> want to betray any specific person's privacy or put a target on any cats 
or cause harassment of any caretakers. Um, so I have created this map uh, to show the approximate location of cats, and you can visit the shortened link. I'm sorry, the map didn't print super well, but you get the gist, and to the right of it, you'll see a link that's shortened. You can type that in, and it's an interactive Google map. The orange icons are, here, it's easier to see here. This is the zoom in of Division Street and Barber Street. The orange icons are 2021 through June 2022. The red maroon is July 22 through June of this year. And then the magenta is July of this year through the present. Um, our group first met in August of 2021. Since then, we have trapped about 370 cats. Pause for applause. <laughs> So we are volunteers, all volunteers. Uh, we pay veterinarians to do the professional work of surgeries and anesthesia, but we volunteer at the clinics to snip ears off and to inject rabies vaccines and to clean things. Um, we sacrifice the smells of our cars and garages and sneakers. We work at the clinics, we do all of this work. Um, as you can see on the back of the report, we also have a very hardworking and dedicated fundraising committee. Our group has a presence at nearly every community event. Um, in fact, we're selling Gertrude Hawk chocolate bars right now at $2 a piece, uh, perfect for the holiday season. Please just get in touch with any one of us. Um, our biggest challenge remains finding affordable clinics and available vets. In the last few months, we've driven dozen of, dozens of cats to Cortland at their SPCA because they were willing to give us openings and because we were willing to make the hour long drive both ways. In fact, we've been very busy since June 30th, which was my official cutoff for this annual report. And since then, we have fixed an additional 117 cats. So at the average cost of 75 or $80 per cat, this six month period that's not on that report is more likely to be eight or $9,000. We've heard from residents and colony caretakers that after being fixed, their neighborhood cats are healthier looking, they fight less, the males pee on less stuff. Uh, this matches long-standing research about community cat populations and TNR efforts generally, but we're really proud to be hearing it directly from the people of Auburn. We did not permanently remove 370 cats from Auburn. They still exist, they're still there. But I think we can safely assume that we have successfully prevented the births of hundreds, if not more than 1,000 kittens and new cats since 2021. We will, <laughs> I only have one sentence left. We will continue to work and we hope that the city will continue to support us. Thank you very much. I'd just like to give council a chance for the questions they may have for you, so. What's the recovery time for a cat and where does that take place? So for a boy cat, it's like snip, tug, they're done. And as soon as the anesthesia wears off, they're good to go, especially if they're really stressing out in the trap. A girl cat, if this were your pet cat, you would like coddle it for at least a week. But again, they get kind of stressed out in the traps. So it's more like three days. As for where they are, that's a great question because we could really use any space anywhere other than um, next to my shed, the space in Sue's basement, like the space at Karen's house. I mean, a dedicated space would be fine. They really don't smell that bad because we figured out how to use piddle pads. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Other business from the council? 
Council? No one? Our second public to be heard? Is there anyone desiring to be heard? In the back of the room, please. Approach. I'd like to thank Bill Lupien for oh. his service. Would you, would you please come up to either podium? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. You insist. <laughs> Billy doesn't get a rebuttal, so you're in here. You're, you're, you're click. So I am a family member and I moved up here 20 years ago and Billy loves the city and I'm so proud to be his cousin. Anyone else starting to be heard? Very well. 